Welcome to Municipal Affairs. I'm Christopher Brown. Our team has been journeying across the province of Saskatchewan in preparation for our live Saskatchewan Provincial Election Night special exclusively on YouTube. During our journey, we connected with mayors, councillors, and other key stakeholders to understand how this election will shape the future of municipalities. And as this election continues to unfold, you will certainly need to stay informed with the Scoop of Political Briefing newsletter. It is your go-to source for daily updates on the biggest stories that is taking place during this election, party strategies, and Yes, even candidate advertising. I certainly took advantage of it during my Cross Saskatchewan tour these past few weeks, and it is a source you do not want to miss. So sign up for free at thescoop.ca. That's the S-K-O-O-P dot C-A. And get the essential insights delivered directly to your inbox. Today, we are joined by Warman Councillor Marshall Seed, who will share his unique perspective on this election and how he sees the local candidates performing. Attention Saskatchewan. This election season, Municipal Affairs is hitting the road in partnership with SUMA for the Saskatchewan Provincial Election. Join us on election night for live coverage straight from Regina, on YouTube featuring exclusive insights from municipal leaders and stakeholders across the province. We will be capturing their reaction to the results and be diving into what the new provincial government means for municipalities. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan to hear directly from local leaders about the issues that matter most to you. Plus, this fall, we will be traveling across Saskatchewan starting September 30th to hear directly from local leaders like yourself about the issues that matter most. This is your election covered like never before. Municipal Affairs, your trusted voice from the grassroots to the government. Uh, Councillor, I'm just going to address you as Councillor because you're still Councillor until the next election, even though you're in the midst of one right now. Councillor, there's a provincial election going on right now. Uh, have you been paying attention and what are you hearing that from the party leaders that will hopefully give you a little bit more happiness when it comes to potentially return to Council after the next election municipally? Right. So I haven't heard too much from our uh, local uh, elected representative right now, who's currently uh, the SAS party candidate. Ironically enough, while I was waiting to come here and talk to you, the NDP candidate called my cell phone and asked if I had a minute to talk. So uh, I'll be talking to her uh, in an hour and see what's going on there. Um, we hear a lot from the, uh, the governing party right now, the SAS party, um, about what they're going to do as far as helping health care and helping some of the issues that we have around education and schools and things of that nature. Um, these are huge issues that we've all always had. Uh, I hear a lot from the opposition parties as well talking about the sheer amount of money they're going to put into something, uh, but I haven't seen a formidable plan as to how they're going to do it, which is typical, but in my opinion, um, almost a little bit too late, uh, not enough at, this, at the time. So we'll have to see. Um, I'm hoping to hear what her platform is and really what she wants to run on. This is a very much a stronghold for the SAS party. Um, and I think uh, as a result of that, our uh, local candidate is actually spending a lot of time outside of the, the area helping others that might need a little more help. For yourself locally, is there something that the party leaders can address during the debate or during the last two weeks of the campaign that will give you hope that they're taking municipal issues seriously? Absolutely. The two uh, biggest issues for me, both as a resident and as a representative of the community, is uh, health care and access to doctors. Um, Warman is a unique hybrid in the fact that our um, medical professionals are considered to be uh, urban, but yet our ambulatory service is considered to be rural. And the reason for that is it benefits the government the best. So we have some issues there where response times don't need to be at a certain level because we're a rural. And then we have times where it's like, well, but you're in urban setting for doctors, so we can't just send doctors from Saskatoon. People can just go to Saskatoon. So for me, the contentious issues for our residents right now is access to basic health care of doctors and also understanding that when you call for an emergency service ambulance, you're not going to be waiting 20 minutes. You're in the midst of your own campaign as well, running for re-election from council. Um, I know it's still early days of recording this interview, but are you hearing from residents of Warman about health care, about doctor shortages, when you're talking to them about your own re-election bid? And when you do, how do you tell them, well, there's a provincial election going on, you should talk to your local MLA candidates. Is that happening? 
Definitely, um, even before the election was called here for municipality, um, we definitely hear almost every single time about, I'm concerned about having doctors. I had a resident reach out to me actually over a year ago saying, I'm afraid to have a baby in this town because I don't know if I'm going to get an ambulance. To me, that was like, I literally lost sleep over it. It upset me so much. So we've actually made measures to get a local ambulance that is actually stationed in Martinsville now, but it's supposed to serve our region a little bit better. We're holding their feet to the fire to make sure that we are getting um, the ambulatory service that our residents deserve, not even just demand. So we're hearing those issues consistently even before the election was called and because they haven't been addressed um, to the point that they should be at this point, uh, it's a continuing narrative of, of what's happening. So um, specifically, I mean, our election was literally called two days ago. So uh, have I heard it in the two days? Not necessarily, but I know that it's an issue. It's an issue for my family. So I know it's an issue for my neighbors as well. So those are huge. So what's the one thing you're looking for from the next government, whether it be the Sask Party or even the Sask NDP or the Saskatchewan, the United Saskatchewan Party, I always get those mixed up. What are you looking for specifically from the next government, whether it be personally or even from a municipal standpoint? Great question. They, uh, they need to take a big dose of reality and understand that our healthcare system is in tremendous jeopardy. And I understand that's across Canada, but we have very, very specific tangible issues here, such as um, emergency rooms being at 300% capacity. We have ambulances that are in the field that are able to transfer one patient a day because they don't have other ambulances available and they're not allowed to leave the hospital until the patient's in a bed. When there's no bed available for 12 to 15 hours, the ambulances can't respond to another call. So it's an absolute sliding scale of catastrophe that's happening there. And the reality is that the politicians need to stop politicizing the entire thing. They need to suck it up and they need to do what's right for the residents. And that is, I don't care who's in power for that, they need to make it happen. Um, that and again, our education system here for kids, we have a beautiful school that was built in Warman here seven years ago, I guess, eight years ago. Uh, it's way over capacity. They're starting to use areas that were never designed as, as teaching rooms for kids. Um, we have to get into the cycle of building more schools. And that's for our community and communities around us as well. It's not unique to Warman. So education and health, which are not, you know, obviously new issues by any stretch of the imagination, but we have to realize that we can't continue to keep trying to do it like we've always done it because it's not working. Final question. People are going to be heading to the polls here soon for advanced yeah. voting and then also for voting in the provincial election and municipal. What's the one thing that you hope they do or think about before they put that X beside the next person, that next MLA or the re-election of an MLA? What's the one thing that you hope that they think about before marking their ballots? Do your research. Understand what not only the parties are promising, but do the research on what the person has done because I don't care what somebody says they're gonna do, I wanna see what they've done. Um, it, it's, you know, we, we've talked a couple of times, it's that actions, not words, and I don't trust what anybody says. I trust what I can see them doing. So they've gotta do that research and understand who it is that they're dealing with, and if they say, look, we're gonna open up 10 hospitals, and they've had eight years and they've not opened one, I don't believe that they're gonna open a hospital. So we have to just educate yourselves and stop worrying about what color you're voting for. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Municipal Affairs. We just want to take a moment and ask you to do one quick favor for us. If you haven't already, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You will not want to miss the upcoming episodes around the Saskatchewan election, but also you will not want to miss our special election night special live from downtown Regina, where we will be discussing how this election will impact the municipal landscape over the next four years. So if you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. And if you're listening to this on audio, head over to our YouTube channel, Cross Border Interviews or Cross Border Networks, and subscribe today. And if you haven't already, be sure to head over to the scoop.ca and get that insightful newsletter delivered directly to you every weekday, directly to your inbox. I use it as a resource when I was traveling across the province of Saskatchewan, and it is a resource that you surely will want to have. And your support has been wonderful over the last few weeks and over the last few months and even last few years. So we truly appreciate you taking time and watching and listening to all these great episodes and great interviews that we've been putting out. So stay connected. Stay informed, and we'll see you next time here on Municipal Affairs. Mm -hmm.